Hi, my name's Emily and I make videos about motherhood, minimalism and Montessori. I have a two-year-old daughter called Violet and a two-month-old son called Freddie. And this video is part of my toy series where I review open-ended and Montessori-inspired toys. Today I have a play kit from Love Every. This is the investigative play kit for months 31, 32 and 33. Violet is currently 29 months, so this developmental age will be coming right up for her and this seems like a really good starting point. Love Every is a USA based subscription kit. You can get subscriptions from your children's ages from zero all the way to age three, initially every two months and then every three months, or you can buy the kits individually as a gift, which is what I did. They don't currently ship to Australia, so if you're keen to get your hands on these kits, you have to pay a parcel forwarding service. Today I'm going to take you through what's in the kit, my first impressions of the quality of the materials, the pros and cons of each one, and then a little bit how, about how they're going to be used. The first thing that you'll notice in every Love Every Play kit, sorry, is that it comes with a play guide. This is cardboard and on a plastic ring. One thing that I immediately noticed about this and also the play guide in the other kit we received is that the edges are a little bit dented, so I think they probably need to be a little bit firmer. The play guide is not only a look at each of the materials that are provided in the kit, but it also is a bit of a study into the developmental age and ways that parents can support the developmental age. And what I also really like is they've got a few things in there about parent self-care. Within the play guide, there is a look at each material and various ways to use it. So it's not necessarily that you go in and it's one activity at one level and then it's over. Most of them can be scaffolded to, to three or four different levels and I'll talk a bit more about which materials can be done that way. There are also more activities that suit the developmental age that can be completed with other materials that you have at home or even materials from previous play kits if you have the subscription. The first item I'm going to show you is the match and tap hammer box. This is a wooden base with plastic top with holes in it. It comes with 16 pegs in four different colors and it comes with three pattern cards. These are plastic uh, with two different patterns on each one. And the way this works is you have sort of your stage one activity to push or tap. Sorry, I forgot to mention that it also comes with a hammer. Mine has a weird little dark mark on it, which I'm not thrilled about, but anyway hammering them in. We all know toddlers love to bash things. Stage two, you would slide your pattern card in over the top and you would work with your toddler on corresponding the colors of the pegs to the holes in the pattern board. And then the third stage, you are going to stand it right up the back there and work on reflecting that pattern back onto the board. So a few different stages of learning there. I think this is really clever. I love that it is made to scaffold those levels of difficulty across a three to four month period. The quality of the materials is really good. I love that the base is wood. You know, plastic is never going to be my first choice for a toy. However, there are some occasions where it is just what really works in this instance. Uh, the patterns are excellent. I think their use of primary colors is a good idea. They might have considered sticking with the three primary colors rather than including the orange, just to make it a little bit more well, firstly, more Montessori aligned, and secondly, a little bit simpler because the red and the orange colors are quite similar, but that's really the only thing that I consider to be a negative. I think the issue with the hammer, see so if you can have a look there, it's got a bit of a dark line. There seems to be a bit of a, like a silicone or rubbery coating on the hammer, and mine seems to have a mark on it. I don't know if that's typical or whether that's just a bit of an aberration with mine. The second item listed on the display is the countdown timer. This comes with a battery, which I've already installed, and it is a 20 minute timer. You twist the little dial and it gives you color segments, and it shows the passage of time, which as we know, toddlers really struggle with. The idea behind this timer is that it's meant to assist with transitions. I tried this out earlier with just setting a five minute window of play for my daughter before she was told she had to go have a nap. She's still not asleep, but we can try. And then you have the option of, let's see how close I can get and see if I can make a beep, um, two volume levels on the back for the beeping when it goes off. I really think this is, there we go. So, four sets of beeps. I really think this is brilliant. 
you can put it out of the way of your toddler, you can show that this is their time for quiet time or that this is the transition stage between the next activity. So for example, I would probably set this when my child is in the bath so that she knows she has X amount of minutes and then she can see the time passing with the passage of the color disappearing and she can hear it beep when it's finished. If I had one thing that I think is perhaps a bit of a downside is that it is only 20 minutes. So for a child like mine who will happily go for an extended quiet time, I would love to have a one hour timer that I could put on because I think that 20 minutes, although it's a really developmentally appropriate age for sort of 30 months, it would be good to have the option for activities where you know your child can go a little bit longer. And if you set a time for 20 minutes, you actually risk breaking the cycle of concentration. So just a thought there, but overall, brilliant idea. Third, we have the twist and pivot pattern puzzle. I was really happy when I got to look at this up close because I thought all of these layered pieces were going to be plastic and they're actually painted wood. As with all Love Every's items, they are really sort of chunky and they feel like good quality. And again, this isn't a play item that can be scaffolded. So this pink orangey set is a screw option. This second one, the yellows and greens, requires you to twist. It's sort of the style of the hape twisting peg puzzle, which Violet has already mastered, but it's possibly a little bit more challenging because the pieces don't spin. You really have to twist them. And this third, the blues are really quite tricky. It took me a minute to figure this out because some of the, the blue box, you have to twist the block, but then sometimes you have to twist the, the, the peg or the piece instead. So that is gonna be difficult. I envisage this item as being one that's gonna give a lot of frustration when she first attempts it. And again, the play guide gives options of how to set this up, but I think I'm gonna put this out and invite her to take the pieces off first and then give her one set at a time to learn to put back on in order of difficulty. Cons with this item. Look, it's really heavy, so if you are paying for overseas shipping, that's going to be a downside, but obviously that does add to the quality of it. The only opportunity that I can see that has been missed here is the opportunity for this to be a bit of a color matching activity. So what they could have done is use all shades of pink or yellow or blue, I mean this one has, and then put them in order from lightest to darkest so that you can then use the pieces to talk about color gradients and to use with other activities or to, to place them in color order on the pegs. So I think that although that really has no bearing on the activity as it is currently, it is a bit of a missed opportunity. So just something there. Next up we have the book. Love Every's books are beautiful. As with most of their products, they are sustainably made. So even the plastics in this kit are BPA and phthalate free and some of them are actually on the way to being bioplastics, which is great. And if you go to Love Every's website, they do have a lot of commitment to sustainability. So you've got non-toxic inks used here. As you can see, so I'm gonna get some focus there. Love Every Books are using realistic people. That's really important and it is a, a keystone of Montessori that they try to use realistic images to relate to what the child sees in their everyday environment. They also use a really diverse range of people in their books, which is perfect. This one is the play date and it's actually quite a, a detailed story about going to a friend's house and all the activities that you're gonna do there, but at some point, the, there is a bit of a meltdown and the child has big feelings and has to work through that. So this is not just a happily ever after kind of story, although it has a positive em ending, but it, it encompasses some of the, the more challenging aspects of a toddler's day and of, of life as a toddler, which we all know can be very emotional. So this is a really, really cute little book. I think it's wonderful and I'm really intrigued to see what Violet's reaction to this story is going to be. Uh, the only downside, and again, I don't know if this is just the book that I've received or whether this is characteristic, I think this actually happened with the other book in our other kit too, is that the front um, cover is a little bit almost curved, so it doesn't actually sit flat, it seems to be slightly warped, which is again not great. I'm hoping that will change once it's been stored flat or stored in a bookshop and kind of squashed for a bit, but I think it's actually the, the way that the cover is formed, so that's just a cosmetic issue. I think overall this is a great quality book. All right, the next item is the Liquids Lab, and this is one of the items that really drew me to the kit. This is, tray is 60% bioplastic, as is the little funnel, and then you've got three plastic beakers or yeah, test tubes, I don't know, that all 
hold a different volume and the volumes are represented by these grid lines on the front you've got one two and three so this is fantastic I know my daughter has always loved pouring she's been doing it for quite a young age but this introduces her to the idea that different containers have different volumes that they aren't necessarily going to fit so if she takes this jug with three units of liquid and attempts to pour it into this test tube which holds one it's going to spill hence the tray it's also going to be difficult to pour sort of into such a small opening so using the funnel is a really great fine motor skills Drawback, we prefer to use glass materials, so she drinks from glasses, uses glass jugs. Uh, that's a very Montessori approach because it teaches them to care for their environment and these are plastic, but again, that would have been heavier and also not everybody who buys Love Every is as strict with those aspects of Montessori. It comes down to personal preference and it does, it is important that Love Every is making an effort to be more environmentally responsible and that they're using less toxic plastics, which whilst not ideal is, is better. The next activity has two parts to it. So you've got what they are calling the eco hoops because I'm assuming that they are also made from a bioplastic and matching coloured bean bags made from organic cotton. So again, you've got lots of ways you can use these hoops. You've got colour matching initially with the bean bags and with other items in your home. You've got jumping through the bean bags or making a bit of an obstacle course. We've got some stepping stones and some various other gross motor tools. This is zoning in on the gross motor abilities. My daughter particularly needs to practice jumping with two feet. So I'm hoping that this will encourage that. You've got throwing. Again, really important for toddlers to have an outlet for throwing. We've got, we see that sometimes it's a bit of a behavior flare up. She'll say, throw, and just grab whatever's nearest and, and chuck it. So having something that's appropriate to throw will be a really good way to redirect when that does crop up and she's going for something like a wooden block. Uh, in terms of negatives for these hoops, if they were a fraction bigger, they could possibly be used as hula hoops or if they had a rounded edge, but I don't think that's really negative. They do what they're intended to do. They look pretty boring. When I first looked at the kit, I wasn't very excited about that. But when I see it now, and when I consider that, you know, it's winter here, it's raining, this is a great option for some indoor energy expenditure. So no real cons with this one. The final item in this box are the things that move memory game. So cute little spotty cardboard box. And in that you've got a set of vehicle matching cards. There are six pairs. Each pair depicts a different picture of a vehicle. These are made from stiff cardboard. And again, the, the play guide gives a lots of ways to play matching and then moving forward to memory. This is a good about and, uh, out and about sized game. They have a cute little sturdy cardboard box to go with them. So something that you can play on the go. There are a couple of things that I think are perhaps not as good about this activity. The first thing is that the, the pictures are art pictures or, or paintings or watercolors or whatever you would call that rather than a realistic picture. So I think they could have gone with a photo and secondly, if they had had the name of the vehicle alongside, obviously your 30 month old is generally not reading, there may be the occasional one that does, mine certainly doesn't, uh, but that just does help link the word with the picture and just works with that idea about the familiarity of what those words look like. We're always looking for opportunities to enhance language development. But overall, yeah, it, it's a good little set. It certainly isn't one of the highlights of the box and it's really just sort of a bit of a, a bit of an added extra run that I'm really excited to, to present to my child. So that is the investigator play kit for months 31, 32 and 33. You're almost three year old. And overall, I am very excited about this kit and I think that we are going to get a lot of play from it. I think that the materials are well designed to be scaffolded and to have that initial perhaps slightly too hard, slightly frustrating aspect to them. You've got to hit that sweet spot with kids where it's challenging enough to get them engaged, but not so challenging that they're just like, I give up. 
So there's the opportunity to, to be resilient, to build resilience and perseverance in working with these toys. And the play guide, if you're not sort of quite sure how to do that, the play guide does step out a lot of those ideas for you really well. The materials are very, very sturdy. So you can pick up any of these pieces and you know that these are going to last forever. Even the plastic parts, they're not cheap, flimsy plastic at all. You could probably use them in a myriad of ways. You could drop them and I'm you know, fairly sure that they're going to be fine for a good long time, which is very important. You know, these are not cheap toys. You're not buying them with the expectation that they're going to last you one child and then done or even one you know, three months and then done. These need to be uh, have more longevity and in my opinion, they certainly do. Uh, another pro alongside that is just the fact that the company is committed to sustainability and quality and also fair work, fair wages, fair working conditions for their manufacturing processes. They have a really good record with that, they are committed to such things, that's a massive point in their favour. Cons. Um, look, overall there's still quite a bit of plastic, right? Even something that's 60% bioplastic is still 40% non-bioplastic and overall across their range there are there are probably more pieces of plastic than I would ideally choose but you know each person has separate convictions when it comes to something like that with plastics secondly is cost this is not a cheap set of toys you could theoretically go out and purchase similar items individually and more cheaply and also more cheaply uh, but obviously they've done the work for you in convenience as with any kind of service or subscription you are paying for that convenience aspect and the fact that someone else has done the research for you and in Love Every Case they do have a range of qualified people putting input into the design of these kits. Um, another con is that it's a kit so this is not a shop that you can go to and pick up any piece that you like it's the whole kit or it's nothing so you have to be prepared that you might get something in your kit that you're perhaps a little bit less excited about however you need to kind of open your mind a bit and go with the directions in the play guide and just see and you know kids can surprise us i've put out things that i thought were the most beautiful glorious toys in the history of the world and my daughter has just barely given a second glance and then i put out things that i'm like I don't really like this. I don't really want this on my shelf. And yet it's become a massive hit. So as much as we would like to always dictate our children's preferences, we don't necessarily have that option. And so it's worth putting out the things that you think are a bit less exciting. Overall, I think Love Every is great. I think if you're in the US and you don't have to pay for shipping, I think their shipping is free over $80 or something, then absolutely do it. Would I buy from Love Every again? I think so. If there are any other Love Every Play Kits or even other toys that you think I should check out and you'd like to see a review on, please comment below. Please click the thumbs up to like this video and subscribe for more upcoming content around toys and play. Or follow us on Instagram for daily play inspiration and a lot of baby stuff. Oh, and there's my baby growing. All right, thank you so much for joining us. See you next time.